If I've learned anything from my stalled trajectory rising through the ranks of the medieval reenactment society, it's that there's nothing more frustrating than being stuck at a level, specifically a stupid surf. Same with beginner guitar, right? So today we're going to talk about maybe taking some stuff that you already know as a beginner, and then just really kind of breaking through into that next echelon. You know, maybe you don't have goals to be like a noble or a king or even a wizard. Maybe you just want to be a, a humble vassal. I'm going to help you do this right now. Okay, so people's key. The key of G. The key of peasants, but in a good way. <laughs> We're going to do the first thing that you learn on guitar usually is play a G major chord, right? So middle finger, third fret, low E string, pointer finger, second fret of the A string. You know, we're gonna leave the rest of the chord open, okay? So even though if we strum all six strings, technically it's not really a G chord because we're getting that open E string in there, but we're actually gonna involve this in the next part, okay? I think uh, the disconnect a lot of beginner players never really kind of punch through with is being able to incorporate scales in them. Because a lot of times you'll be like, all right, well, here's a G chord, and here's the G major scale, and then now just kind of get going and playing with that. Well, I think it really helps to be a little more specific with what we're doing. So we're gonna play just the bottom two strings, the B and the E string, notes in the key of G, all right? So it's really easy to do. It's just open, one, three, open, two, three, okay? So the notes would be B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, okay? The nice thing is, is the G string, right, is open right beneath them, okay? So what we can do is we can actually play all three of the bottom strings and get it to sound like this. Okay, so now we're actually kind of making little mini chords. You can kind of go through and name these, like even if you just have the third fret and the high E string and play the bottom three strings, you know, that could be like a G chord. The first fret right here, this could be like a C major chord. But we're not thinking about this. We're gonna think about this as a way to add to a chord that you already know to make it a little bit more musical, all right? So I'm actually gonna do a different voicing of this G major chord where my ring finger is on the third fret of the low E string and my middle finger is on the second fret of the A string. Okay, now, you might see a lot of players use this one instead of this one. The reason being is because now it gives us access to like that right there, you're pulling your finger on that C note if you want to because we're actually gonna use other chords in the key of G to kind of do this. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna hit the lower part of this chord. Maybe just start with the root note, just the third fret on the E string. Maybe strum into the chord. I'm aiming for the first four chords, right? Again, I'm not gonna be a stickler if you hit five strings instead of four strings or three strings instead of four strings. I'm not gonna demote you back down to a peasant or a stupid surf. I can't get over the surf thing, right? It's just dumb. But uh, yeah, aiming for the lowest four strings. All right, so root chord. And then just kind of strumming through the scale, really. That's the beautiful thing about having the open notes be in the key that you're doing. Key of G is just G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. So it really helps out. If you don't know this stuff, check out my Patreon because I've got tons and tons of lessons that take you from your absolute first beginner lesson all the way to the wizardry of the mighty Merlin because we just finished the modes. There's some connection with Merlin and the modes. Make up your own joke there. Check that out, Patreon, super cheap, all right? So, there's the G chord. And if you see my pick, I'm just kind of really focusing on the higher part of the string set. And it almost, the, the slower you rake that, the less beginner and the more noble you sound, right? Just like that, okay? Instead of going like. You know, whatever, technically that's all in the key, but I think it just, it lacks the elegance that the medieval society is really striving for, right? So again, I'm just really kind of raking. forward and backward through that scale, just with open strings too. Now the great thing is, because all of these notes are in the key of G, all the chords that work in the key of G, you can do this with two, all right? So for instance, E minor, 
another super popular one that you probably already know, right? Just middle finger, second fret on the A string, which is really just where we came from, right? So you can just swing your ring finger to the second fret of the D string. Do the same thing, root chord. Okay, so back to back, it'll sound like. Let's add another one, C. And then end up on G, okay? So what we're really doing is we're adding kind of like a melody on top of these chords. So even though it's really, I, I think, very beginner basic concepts, we're kind of combining two different concepts into one thing that sounds more like a cohesive piece of music, all right? So really, you can experiment with any of these in any key as long as you know uh, how the notes kind of fall into these spots and if the open strings will help you out. Another great one is the key of C. All right, the only difference between the, t the bottom two strings right here, as far as, remember, G was open one, three, open two, three. The only difference between the key of C and the key of G is in G we have the second fret, F sharp, and C It's the first fret, F. It's going to sound bad right now doing that same thing because we've been so used to hearing the key of G this whole time, but if we just switch all this up to make it even an easier shape to remember, open one, three, open one, three, we can still use that open G string because G is in the key of C. So now we can use those key of C chords, maybe even like a, a C to an A minor to an F major chord. We don't have to use the bar chord, we can just use uh, my favorite F major shape, which is right here. Take a regular C major chord, Put your pinky down on the third fret of the D string and move your middle finger down. All right? There's F major. F major 7 if you get that open E on top. You do the same thing here. And then use all the key of C chords just by making that one minor adjustment. So I think it's a good way to start introducing scales. Uh, maybe in a way that is more musical if you're a little bit intimidated by the hand shapes. Uh, and again, you know, not the, uh, you should definitely keep learning the hand shapes because they're going to be super helpful. But I think specifically on acoustic guitar, this stuff is probably going to help you sooner rather than later as far as adding extensions to chords that you already know and kind of just making them a little bit more fun, right? So let's go back to the key of G and let's run through all of the six main chords in the key of G and do this, okay? So we've got G major is the one chord, A minor is the two chord, B minor is the three chord, C major is the four chord, D major is the five chord, and then E minor is the six chord, okay? So I didn't play this traditional D major, I played the lower D major, because again we're separating kind of like the lower bands of the guitar with the higher ones so when we get to that G chord I think it kind of fits a little better using this lower D major chord where your middle finger is on the F sharp of the low E string second fret your pinky is on the D on the B string, third fret. Your ring finger is on the second fret of the G string. Think of this as like the Friars D major chord. That fits for some reason that I can't fully explain right now, but it just seems right, you know? So, I kind of like this one because... It just kind of has a nice peaceful medieval sound to it, you know what I'm saying? So you can add that to the G. A minor. B minor. Back to C major. Friars D, and E minor. Back to G. 
took an incredible amount of resolve to not crack myself out <laughs> calling out the Friars D. It sounds like the worst Netflix show ever made. The Friars D, starring Sean Daniel. If anybody has any contacts at Netflix, help me make this happen because the medieval society is clearly dropping the ball. So anyways, that's all I have for you today. You don't have to do it in order. Do it however you want. If you want to just focus on that top string with the G chord, the Friars D. Ah, yes. We always end up home on G. So again, now that I've, uh, I've dropped all that wisdom on you, it's time for you to do the right thing. And you can either sign up for the Patreon or start the Netflix petition to fund the Friars D medieval show that I'm still I'm still working out some of the storylines and the plots in my head but uh either way both great choices so let me know which one uh you like better and maybe if you have some ideas for early scripts for the Friars D talk to you next time